I want to welcome everyone that's joining us now, uh, live streaming from around the world. We apologize. We're just a little bit late getting started tonight. Uh, some preacher got wound up at the early part of the service, and I won't call his name, but his initials is Jimmy Wilson. But in, uh, sharing with uh, what all's happened at the revival up in uh, um, Independence, Kentucky this week. We've had such a good time. Uh, I was up there. Uh, we got up there. Jenny and myself got there late Sunday night, and uh, we got uh, into service uh, early the next morning, and uh, we was there Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, Tuesday night, and again this morning. We had such a great time. You can go to Brother Tommy Bates' uh, uh, Facebook page, after we get done tonight, and <laughs> I'll watch it anytime later on this week, and uh, it'll be such a blessing to you. The Lord uh, opened up some things for me uh, and showed me some things that I need to be doing a little bit differently, and the Lord's brought me to a crossroads uh, in my ministry. The doors have been opened up. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, the churches that I've had a chance to talk to pastors uh, that are begging me for material. They want me to send uh, any type of material that I can, Bibles, uh, anything I can to them, DVDs. I've been mailing DVDs to Africa, different places in Africa, Kenya and Uganda, mostly in Kenya. I'm trying to reach out everywhere that I can, sending uh, uh, things to uh, Pakistan, uh, anywhere that I can. Uh, Portugal, we sent Bibles to Portugal just recently, and uh, we're looking forward uh, to getting to go there next month. And and uh, to preach to them there in Portugal, and uh, or July, I'm sorry, July. Uh, the times are moving on in such a hurry. But anyway, uh, all these resources has opened up, and the opportunity is endless. And the Lord's worked some things out for me now where I can start uh, having more time. Jenny's getting feeling better to where she can go with me now, and we're going to start taking revivals uh, in different places and uh, uh, have the freedom now. I'm turning some of the stuff at the family business over to my son. Let him uh, pretty much take care of it so dad and mom can take off and go places now. So we're going to be where we can hold revivals and so on. Anyway, anyway, make a long story short, as my ministry grows, it's going to take money to do uh, everything. And uh, I've been reluctant about uh, starting a partnership drive uh, because of all of the um, prosperity preachers blowing everything out of proportion uh, and, and getting off in left field with this thing. But uh, I want to give an opportunity to the millions of people that watches my TV and radio every week to become a partner with Jimmy Wilson Ministries. If they could send $25 per month, I could fulfill uh, pretty much all of the requests I get from Africa. You keep me busy. But uh, I'd like for this to be a shipping station here uh, where I can get, uh, and, and we've got everything set up. We've got everything uh, set up but them uh, green pieces of paper uh, with the president's pictures on them. We don't have enough of them. Uh, but everything else uh, we've got right here. God set everything up. We're ready to roll. He's freed me up to where I can do it. Now we need for you to jump on board and do your part uh, to help get the gospel out, not only in America uh, and the real word. I want to emphasize on that. There's a plenty of things going out over the airways. You've seen the mess. Amen. It's an embarrassment. It embarrasses me to death of people that are supposed to be preachers uh, with the uh, kangaroo stuff that you see on television and radio in this day and time. We need the truth to get out. We sure do. And there's not many uh, that's putting it out there. But anyhow, you know what I preach and what I stand for. You just pray about it. If God leads you, you send it. Uh, and we'll get it on out and uh, get these things taken care of. I'm busy about the Lord's business. I want to get busier. Amen. I want to do more for the Lord. and want more people coming on board uh, to help. And I've got some people in the church that's willing to help. But they're already giving about all they can give. They can spend some time here wrapping packages and help me box stuff up and getting it ready to mail. But, uh, you know, but they've, they've just, they've got bills too. And they can't, we can't do it all by ourselves. All right. In Ephesians chapter number four, we are ready for verse 20. But we're going to back up to verse 17 
seen uh, to help better identify where we're at. I've never have shouted in as much. I, my handkerchief was soaking wet. I was almost a horse, and I've done more dancing in church than I've done in years or ever in my life today. It's something else. Um, the power of God moved. It started right here this last Sunday morning when the power of God moved. It's been 20 years since I spoke, spoke in tongues on television, but it'll be on this coming Sunday morning. Amen. The power of God overwhelmed me in such a way. I'm telling you, I had me a time, and the church did too. Amen. This last Sunday morning, it was the beginning of what was to shape up and add to and exalt the movement of God that started here this late Sunday morning that was in Independence, Kentucky. Uh, I'm telling you, it's been out of this world, and the Lord has showed me things and uh, opened up doors for me, preached to me a little bit. I had to say, oh, me, and to repent a little bit by not to... Uh, uh, but, being obedient. Sometimes, uh, you know, you you mean to do the right thing, but we're kind of like the old story about the man that uh, had died uh, and he went to heaven. And when he got to heaven, he saw Peter. And Peter said, uh, well, he said, uh, uh, I want to ask you a question. He said, uh, uh, how come you're up here? He said, well, I drowned He said, you drowned? He said, yeah, I did. said, the waters got up and uh, uh, and he said he just washing everything away and said it washed me away and he said I drowned in the water and Peter said I like to know why you drowned in the water he said we sent you the best transportation that money could buy three different times and you refused it he said you were standing on the roof holding on to the chimney sent somebody or the Lord sent somebody by in a helicopter and you said I'm just waiting on the Lord then there's somebody come by in a speedboat, and he pulled up next to the roof and said, Hop in there, friend. He said, No, I'm waiting on the Lord. He said, It wasn't very long till somebody come by in a raft and said, We got room for one more. Let's float up against the house and jump in here, friend. He said, No, I'm a waiting upon the Lord. Amen. And Peter said, we sent you transportation three times uh, and you turned it away. So sometimes uh, we have to be told two or three times. Uh, amen. And I've had people, the Lord uh, speaking uh, through people to me and I let my hard head and my pride get in the way because I didn't want to ask for money. And the only thing hindering my ministry is me. Now, don't you think that's a whooping to get? Amen. So therefore, I've done what I'm supposed to do now. Amen. And I know there'll be some negative people. There'll be some people who won't want to go to heaven because they won't have the color carpet they think they ought to have up there. Amen. But those, uh, amen, that loves the Lord, they're going to understand and want to get on board to help. Uh, amen. All right. Verse 17, Ephesians 4 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated uh, from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, that would be lustfulness, a lustful things, a lust for the things of the world, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Amen. So he was saying that uh, the Gentiles and some, uh, that they, they were blinded, uh, amen, because of greediness. But look at verse 20 now. This is where we're ready to pick up. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and being renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not 
the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Now, we'll stop there and go back over uh, some of this here. But he was saying that those of us that have learned Christ, we're not like those uh, that are full of greediness, lasciviousness, and because of the blindness of their heart, uh, they go after the things of the world, but we are different. We have put off the old man. We have put off lying. We have put off uh, uh, lasciviousness and the old works, uh, amen, that the lost man used to have. And we are now a new creature in Christ Jesus, uh, amen, bringing forth good fruit, uh, amen, to give God honor, praise and glory, amen, to live according, uh, amen, to the teachings uh, of the Word of God uh, and allow in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost, amen, to move in our lives, amen. Praise God. We need God, amen, to lead us, amen, in everything, amen. When all of them people were trying to get me uh, to set up uh, uh, the uh, uh, partnership drive. Uh, I kept saying, but I don't want to be labeled uh, like them prosperity preachers, and I don't want to be labeled like them and accused of being like them, and I'm going to wait a little while. But see, the Lord was using them, and I was thinking, man, I better not listen to them uh, the, the whole time. And now then, the Lord had to get my attention and let me know that he was speaking to me. So uh, therefore, we need to put away those things uh, in the past and go forward. We're now, we're not not following the deceitfulness of lust anymore, but we are being renewed uh, in the spirit of our mind. Uh, amen. Thinking on the things of God. Uh, amen. Uh, living. Amen. To be holy. Amen. God said, uh, be ye holy for I am holy. And we've got this uh, mentality that's been uh, uh, brought out now throughout the land. Uh, amen. That it's grace, grace, grace. Uh, we're under grace. Uh, we are under grace grace, amen, but we first receive mercy, amen, and grace is what we receive, amen, through faith and through the mercy that we get from God. Grace is not a license to sin. Turn your head in the opposite direction and do whatever the flesh tells us to do, but it's restrain the flesh uh, and to put the flesh under subjection, uh, amen, to the Word of God and to the Holy Ghost uh, and allow God, uh, amen, to bring us out uh, of the past uh, and out of the negative things, uh, amen, of the world. And there's people today, uh, they've got, uh, you've seen them kind of people that's in church, it's negative and they're carnal. Uh, and if I ever come up with an idea, it'd be a negative one. Hey man, there's always somebody wanting to comment. I thought in somebody a message today that that, that uh, wanted to criticize uh, our radio program on HLE Radio. Uh, I thought about saying, if you'd spend the time uh, filling out a check, uh, amen, and helping the ministry uh, that you did, typing out something, uh, amen, that you did, and sending it to me, amen, I could hire somebody to cure the problem that you don't like. Amen. There's always going to be some goofball out there that don't like something, amen. There'll be somebody, someday I'm expecting them to write me a letter, want me to grow more hair. I'm expecting it any time. Hey man, I would grow more hair if I could just if I get this up here to do what this on the side does. This on the side grows so fast you can almost hear it squeaking. And this up here, it don't even show up anymore. It's like some of my church members, oh boy. <sighs> But anyhow, I better move on before I get in trouble again. All right, but verse 24, and that you put on the new man, and after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. We're all in this thing together. We all hold each other accountable, and we all must inspire one another, right? Amen. Thank God for them that inspired me when I was a boy growing up and instilled integrity into me and lived in such a way that I knew that you can live a good, 
holy Christian life. And this is what I've heard a bunch of jugheads say. Are we all sin every day? Every, anybody that says they don't sin every day is a hypocrite. Everybody sins and does wrong. Wrong. I can tell you name after name after name of Christian people that I never heard give a cuss word in their life. They were true to their husband and their wife. They never cheated anybody. They done the very best they could uh, to live a holy life. Don't you tell me that you have to sin. I know better than that stuff. Amen. You need to get out of that line rut, uh, amen, that you're in uh, and go to looking uh, amen to God. Thank God. Uh, amen for the saints of God that lived right. Uh, I witnessed their life. Uh, I know that it can be done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can go by every liquor store and don't have to go in none of them. I can pass every Playboy magazine shelf in every store. I don't have to have one. I can get on the Internet and jump over that mess and delete, amen, them women that sends me messages. You mean, Brother Jimmy, women send you while they send me invitations all the time to join with them. Then they want to talk to me. Not them kind of women. If it was a Holy Ghost woman wanting to ask me a question or wanting prayer, I, I don't care a bit to talk to them. I don't want some of them floozies half naked, uh, amen, wanting to talk to me. I delete that mess, amen. It don't tempt me. I got a wife, amen. I'm happy with her, and thank God I'm not full of that mess, amen. I don't have to do that. Greater is he that sent me than he that is in the world. I, I can bypass those things. Things, uh, and live a righteous life. Amen? Amen. All right, verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Well, Brother Jimmy, why did he say be ye angry? Because he knows you're going to. Amen. There's a big difference in being so mad that you go, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Thank you. Oh, it's easing off. I don't want to kill nobody no more. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to say nothing wrong. <sighs> Amen. Amen. You don't have to break out a window. You don't have to give somebody a tongue clashing. You don't have to say dirty words. Oh, Brother Jimmy, I just can't keep from it. Yeah, you can if you want to. Amen. You just don't want to. Amen. If it wasn't in there, it wouldn't come out. Amen, you need to get it out of there so it won't come out of there. Amen, it can't come out if you get delivered from that mess. Amen, so what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is uh, be angry and control yourself. Amen, we don't have to tear up half the county every time something makes us angry. You're going to get angry. Sometimes I get angry, amen, with the way that people live. Amen, and the way they act. Amen, sometimes uh, I get angry when I flip through the channels uh, and I listen to somebody, amen, preaching false teachings. Uh, amen, uh, it, it makes me angry. Amen, not angry. Angry at them, but angry at what they're teaching. Uh, amen. I want to go through the uh, TV screen sometimes. Uh, amen. Adam and I think, oh, that wouldn't be right. Uh, Lord, get them off the out of the off the air somehow or another. They're deceiving people and sending them to hell. Amen. You can be angry and sin not. Jesus was angry. How many read in the scripture? Amen, where Jesus made a, a whip out of some cords and he turned the tables of the money changers upside down and took the cords and ran them all. That was that. And the money changers. Get out of this church. Get out of here right now. You've turned the house of prayer into a den of thieves. Out of here. You're not going to uh, tear up and destroy the house of God. Get out of here. I'm not putting up with this mess. He didn't cuss them. He didn't kill them. He didn't hit them with his fist. He didn't make a cord. <laughs> didn't make a scourge out some cords, uh, and he run them out. He didn't say he whooped them, but I believe he started after them, amen, of swishing that thing in the air and telling them, get out of here, amen. He wouldn't have to hit me with a whip. All you got to do is a whoosh, 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 that thing two or three times to tell me to get out of here, and I'd say, which door would you like for me to use? Amen. You wouldn't have to hit me with it. But what I'm trying to say is, uh, amen, Jesus got angry with a righteous anger, but he did not sin. Amen. That's what he's telling us to do. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Your anger that you get 
Don't let the sun go down on it. What does that mean? If you get mad 3 o'clock this evening, by 5 this evening, get over it. Don't be holding a grudge. You get mad at your husband, don't you go off in another room and say, you sleep by yourself tonight. I'll tell you that right now. And you won't talk to me for a week. Get, self, get yourself right with God. Get over your emotions. Amen. Get back in there where you belong and act like somebody ought to. Get over it. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Amen. There's some people today that holds grudges. Amen. There's, there's some people that hold grudges for years. Amen. Someone told me once that their um, aunt and their mother hadn't spoken over 20 years. And I said, you mean they don't speak to each other? They said, no, it all started over making cornbread. They got to arguing over which one made cornbread more like their mama. And that one word led to another, and they got mad. And for years before their mother died, one of them sisters would call the mother and ask if they had been there on Christmas yet. And if they said, no, they hadn't come, they said, I'll call back later. I'm not going to be in the same house with her. That went on for 20, over 20 years. I don't know. Of course, they, naturally, they went to church. Hey Amen. They didn't realize they was on the way to hell. Hey Amen. Lying to theirself. When we all see Jesus, well, all of us ain't going to see him. Them is holding grudges, ain't Amen. And they sing songs lying to themselves. When the roll is called up yonder, I won't be there. Excuse me. I'll be there, but I won't because I'm mad at my sister over making cornbread. I hate her guts and I'm on my way to hell, but I want to think that I'm on my way to heaven. So I'm going to sing about God's beautiful heaven with the rest of you. Amen. That's what it amounts to. But see, let the sun go down. If she got mad over that, she ought to got over it before the sun got down and said, well, my sister's been stupid ever since she was little, and she can't help. I'm going to love her just the same. Or my sister's been like that, and she's bullied me, and I'm the baby, and she's older. Get over it is what I'm trying to say. Amen. And I, you know what? Family members are the worst there is about holding grudges. Amen. Most of the people will forget their uh, strange, forgive a stranger before they'll forgive a sibling. <laughs> they'll forgive a stranger before they'll forgive their wife or somebody that they love. Amen. That's a shame, isn't it? Amen. But get over it. Amen. Look at verse number 27. I could preach an hour on that verse there. It says, neither give place to the devil. Amen. What you're doing when you're holding a grudge, you're giving place to the devil. And when you know to do good and doeth it not, the Bible says, unto him it is sin. Amen. And any time that we allow ourselves, amen, to be put into the place that the devil, amen, can use us, amen, then uh, woe unto us. We don't need to give place to him. Every one of us has got a battle that we have to fight every day. And we know better than to give an opportunity to the devil. To the devil. If you give the devil an inch, He'll take a mile. You miss one Sunday paying your tithes, and you'll be the biggest thief in the county. Amen. Before long, amen, the devil will have you stealing from God. Amen. And thinking you're getting by with it. Amen. The devil does things like that. Amen. You give him an inch. Amen. If you go, amen, and puff yourself up and think, well, you know what? They should have come over there and shook hands with me is what they ought to have done. And they didn't shake hands with me. Amen. Every now and then I get somebody puffed up at me. I got somebody here a while back get, got puffed up at me. You know what they got puffed up for? Because uh, they told me a need they had, and I didn't have prayer with them. So they confronted me about it. I said, did you want me to have prayer with you right then? They said, yeah. I said, did you ask me to have prayer with you right then? Well, no. I said, do you think I'm as good a mind reader as you think that I ought to be? Hey, man, I did pray for you, but I didn't do it right then. I'd have done it right then. Hey, man, if you were to ask me, hey, man, most of the people, and, and this is what I told them. You, you're going to expose yourself. I said, I sure am. This is what I told them. I said, the devil run that about that much of his tongue up in your ear. 
Amen. I don't pull no punches. I just let them know right quick. You've been listening to the devil. He's run that tongue, that much of his tongue up in your ear, and you listen to him. Amen. You know I've always prayed for everybody if they wanted me to specifically pray for them right then. Amen. I don't know what people want. Amen. I, there was a man come into uh, uh, the parking lot at Walmart a few years ago. He said, Brother Jimmy, I want to see you just a minute. I want you to pray for my wife, if you would, please. And I said, all right, brother. Let's join hands together, and we'll have prayer for her right now. He said, no, I mean just sometime, not now. He said, just whenever that you're praying, sometime later on. I said, well, okay, I mean, you know, that's fine. If it's, so I don't know what you want. Unless you tell me, if I, if, I, if I pray for you without getting your permission, you get mad. Amen. Uh, and, and then if I don't pray for you and you don't tell me, I want you to pray for me right then. I don't know if you mean when I go to pray the next time. People get puffed up, amen, over the, the craziest things, amen, you ever heard of. Amen. They take something the wrong way and the, the devil pumps their head full of stuff, amen, and they go to believe in a bunch of stuff and a bunch of junk. And next thing... Uh, they get uh, distant from, not just distant from that person that they're puffed up at. Uh, they get distanced from God anyhow. Listen, friend, if you're puffed up at somebody, whoever it is, I don't mean that somebody's puffed up at me. I mean whoever you're puffed up with, do you think, uh, amen, you feel like shouting and jumping the pews? Of course you don't. All you are, you're swelled. When you're swelled, you can't even cry, let alone shout. When you're swelled, you can't even join, enjoy the service. Amen? When you're swelled, you won't hear a thing, the preacher said. He can preach an hour and go home, and somebody said, what did the preacher preach on? I didn't hear all of it. What I was doing was thinking about Aunt Lulu getting mad and saying she can make better cornbread than me. See what I'm talking about? We don't need to give place to the devil. And it's easy to give place to the devil. Get over it. Go on. If you're looking for the perfect sister, close your eyes. You'll never find one. If you're looking for the perfect brother, close your eyes because you will never find one. If you're work looking for the perfect preacher, he's nailed him to the cross, and three days later, he resurrected from the grave. Now, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, and all the rest of us has got flaws. Amen? That's all there is to it. Amen? We might not have as many flaws as you got, Hey, man, I, hey, mm -hmm. Brother Jimmy, you just turned that all the way around. Most of them people that are finding flaws has got more flaws than the ones they're finding flaws in. Hey, man, after all, the biggest hypocrite you've ever seen was in the mirror. I'll let that soak in for just a moment. Hey, man, it'll take just a moment, hey, amen, to let that soak in. But that's a picture of the biggest thing you ever saw. <laughs> woo Verse number 28, y'all better not send me off on a conference anymore. <laughs> I'll come back and preach the heart. It'll take your breath. All right, well, I was preaching that away before I left. All right, verse 28, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. Oh, my goodness. Some, some of y'all hang on. Somebody dial 911. All the ambulances is going to have to get out of the bay now. <laughs> Working with your hands. Oh, my goodness, who ever heard of such a thing? The thing which is good <laughs> that he may have to give to him that needeth. Oh, praise the Lord. So we are supposed to be working. Amen. Not to steal. But, Jimmy, how am I stealing? If you're laying around well, and you're able to work, I'm not talking about somebody that's disabled. I'm talking about if you're laying around and you just ain't in the mood and you've got an attitude and you tire too easy uh, that you don't want to work and you're so overweight, well, quit eating and you'll finally get to the place to where you can work. Start working out. Well, Jimmy, I just can't work out. Yes, you can. You can walk. Oh, I just can't do that walking. Yes, you can. 
Yes, you can. It's just the body don't want to. We need to be doing that walking. Brother Jimmy, I stay busy all the time. I do too. But I've started walking too, and I feel better. Amen? In all those hours uh, that I put in during the day, two or three times a week or, or more. Uh, now, I've slacked up the last day or so. I've done enough jumping and shouting and dancing. Maybe it's made up for it. But anyway, but start back on that again tomorrow afternoon. But what I'm trying to say is I've been doing that. It sure had make me uh, feel better. Uh, and, and I've been working. I've been busy every day. I'm uh, probably busier than a lot of people. But see, they, ain't, they don't nothing take the place of walking. Makes your knees feel better. Amen. Makes your hips feel better. Makes your muscles feel better. Makes your belly start shrinking. <laughs> Amen. You know what the funny oh goodness. You know what? The funny thing is people are give a hundred dollars for some type of elixir to drink to lose weight. And all they have to do is get up out of the chair. Limit your intake. Amen. Just eat gravy and biscuit once a week instead of seven days. Amen. Instead of eating sweets at three meals a day and snacking four times a day, just eat a dessert once a week. Discipline ourselves. Amen. It's not easy to do, but you can do it. Limit yourself. I've been limiting myself. I feel better too. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, and, and we need to do that. Amen. And, but what I'm trying to say is we need to be working, not trying to. And if you <clears throat> are able to work and you're lying so that you can get out of it, you're stealing. Who are you stealing from? Were you stealing from me? They raised my taxes to help keep you up. Hello, somebody go get that door. The oxygen just left the room. Brother Jimmy, I can't believe you brought that out. Oh, yeah, you do. You, you know, I've said it before. Just it, It'll be all right. Amen. What I'm trying to say is uh, it's good for us. Well, Brother Jimmy, the Bible says bodily exercise profiteth nothing. Yeah, but I think you took it out of context. Amen. Working your fingers to the bone, getting all the money that you can get a hold of profiteth nothing. That's what he's trying to say. It wasn't trying to say you ain't supposed to exercise. People will try to twist things around to make it say whatever is convenient for them to say. Amen? I seen somebody on this TV program, this old Western here a while back, said, I'm going to go and I'm going to kill him. The good book says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Yeah, but Jesus come by and reproved that and told us that Moses was wrong. Amen, that we're supposed to turn the other cheek. But they'll make the word say whatever they want it to say. All right, look at the verse number 29 now. It says, let no corrupt patient proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So we don't need a bunch of mischief, ungodliness. We don't need a false accusations. We don't need, amen, things that's going to cause people to get scared. Did you ever see or be around some of them drama kings and drama queens? Whenever they hear something, they exaggerate that. They want to get people all worked up to where they say, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? Some reason or another, that puts a thrill in their heart. Hey, it don't thrill me. I like to be around calm and peace and quiet and enjoying life, being able to talk and uh, understand one another. I was sitting yesterday morning in Independence, Kentucky, me and Jenny, and she was sitting across in front of me in a booth at Waffle House. And we'd ordered our eggs and bacon and my coffee and water. And we were sitting there, and the phone began to ring. And it was one of the pastors in Pakistan. And I heard and hadn't heard from him in several days. And 
Uh, I said, I can't take this right now because somebody had just went and filled that jukebox full of quarters and picked out a bunch of them. Honey, I love you. It hurts me all the way to my bones. And I thought, Shh. And it was so loud you couldn't hear. I couldn't even hear what Jenny was saying. And the waitress come over and said, you want a refill? I said, I said, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. She said, do you want a refill? And I read her lips. And I said, uh, yes, please. And she seen me. You couldn't hear anything. And so I didn't take the call from the brother. So I typed him out a message on Facebook uh, politely and sent it back to him. And I said, I apologize. I'm in a Waffle House uh, in Independence, Kentucky. I'm in a conference this week. Uh, and uh, anyway, we're eating breakfast, uh, and somebody just turned the jukebox on wide open, and the speaker is directly above my head, and I won't be able to talk to you. And he laughed and put on there, ha, 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 I understand, Pastor. I will talk to you later. So anyway, uh, I like peace and quiet. And when they started that music, I told Jenny, I said, and I was going out my breakfast. I said, we uh, got here earlier than normal, and I said, we don't have to be in any hurry. We can just sit here and enjoy breakfast together, and we can talk with one another and sip on coffee, but all in all, the devil's got to have a yeah, 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 amen, going right down your ears, uh, amen, to where it messes it up, and now then, I want to swallow my eggs, uh, choke down my coffee, and get out of here so I can get some peace and quiet and some relief in the parking lot but I like peace and quiet but there's some people they want a noise if they can't get somebody fighting if they can't make somebody mad if they can't scare somebody to death with some type of a scare tactic amen to, to uh, uh, cause their ego to indulge or whatever is a thrill that they get out of that they want the music cranks so loud I don't even like gospel music when it's so loud you can't understand the words Amen. You can't say, when we all get to heaven. And I think, Phew. Amen. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It didn't say cause pain and agony. Amen to your brothers. It didn't, call, it didn't say cause half the church to run out in the parking lot. Amen. And get an eardrum rest. Amen. Uh, because of pain. Amen. If you're having to take Tylenol because the music is so loud, it ain't good. That's not a joyful noise unto the Lord. <laughs> Woo-wee. Now, I like good Holy Ghost music. I don't care if it's a little bit loud. Amen. But when it's cracking the windows and my head thumps for two days, it's too loud. Testing, one, two, one, two, three. Somebody grab that door again. All the oxygen. Amen. <laughs> Verse number 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We're sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed unto that day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sealed by the Holy Ghost. Well, Brother Jimmy, that means we can't possibly go to hell, even if we wanted to. That's not what that's saying. What that means is God's hand of protection is upon us as long as we are walking in his grace. As long as we're living for him. Amen. But you cannot be of a, a, a backslid, amen, child of God, and have the protection of God. God will never leave you, but you and I can leave him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So therefore, we are marked with the blessings of God. We are marked with the joy of the Lord. Amen. God's blessings, his favor will be upon us. But the Bible says that judgment must first begin at the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's going to be every born-again believer shall be judged first from the preachers all the way down to every person in the church. The reason you didn't pay your tithes had better be a good one, good enough to make it through judgment. 
Amen. If you miss church, it better be a good one that you didn't put something else before God. It better be something, amen, that God's going to smile on, amen, because judgment shall first begin in the house of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where does the sinner and the ungodly appear? That's talking about the lost. Wrong. The sinner is the lost. The ungodly is the backslidden. If the righteous, if the ones that's paying their tithes attending church, that's not cussing, lying, cheating, stealing, having an affair, that's doing their best to live right, or scarcely makes it into heaven, where does that, uh, the um, unrighteous, amen, where does the ungodly, which is the backslidden, and where does the sinner appear? The sinner is one that willfully sins that has not came to the knowledge of God. Amen. The ungodly is the ones that no longer, amen, are following after the teachings of God. They're willfully breaking the commandments, doing whatever they want to that's convenient for their flesh and really don't care where God likes it or not. Amen. There's some people thanks more. I thank God for grace because I'm getting by with a whole bunch of stuff. No, you're not getting by with it either. Judgment shall first begin at the house of God. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where does the sinner and the ungodly, where does the lost and the backslidden appear if the righteous barely makes it? If the righteous barely makes it, uh, amen, he teaches us to be holy. He gives us the commandments to live by. He teaches us how to live. He to put on the mind of Christ. Well, Jimmy, I got on the mind of Christ. Amen. I'm not living for him. I cuss a little, drink a little, lie when I have to, don't attend church, don't pay my tithes. But God understands. I got a reason for that. Every alcoholic tells you there's a reason why he drinks. <laughs> he thinks he's got to have it. He gets to hurt him. He can excuse himself. Amen. These are people that uh, molest little children. They think they've got to do it. Do you know what? I, I can't, I got to be careful what I say. I sat on a jury one time, and I'm not going to say where it was at, but I've sat on a jury one time, and this is what the state detective told us on a jury. This man that they caught, had proof that they caught him, had been molesting. Uh, someone in his house and he told how it was done and he went to a public workplace and when they got there with the uh, warrant for this man's arrest they went to the front door and the guard called this person to the front door and said when this man walked through the front door and he saw the state detective the city police and the sheriff's office there this is what the man said he said, thank God it's over. I couldn't stop myself. That's the way it is with people that's not doing right with God. They get in the habit and they can't stop themselves. They excuse themselves. They convince themselves that God understands. And I'm different than anybody else. There's a reason for my cussing. Did you know that there's preachers today that has committed adultery and they excused it on the pressures of ministry? It wasn't the pressures of ministry. It's the lust that was in their heart. Hello, are you still with me? Amen. Woo, y'all better pray hard and go to a conference again next time. Amen. I come back fired up. I was fired up before I left. I come back even more fired up. Amen. Listen, we'll get into this next verse next time. We've got two more before we finish up chapter 4. Thank you all that's watching by live streaming. God bless you. Share this on your timeline if you're not too scared to. Amen. And tune us back in Sunday morning. God bless you.